Welcome back to Cinema Flex Music Picks. I'm Davey, your host with the most, the beast with the least. The least we can do today is, well, have a look at this month's indicator bundle. Normally, bundle implies there's more than one release, but in this case, they only have one release this month, although it is indeed um, six features in one box set. Um, postponed since uh, was the last month. Um, they've had a few postponements this year out with their control. Um, but regardless, quality is always worth waiting for. Um, I'm going to be looking at Indicators Universal Noir Volume 1. They have, of course, already made great inroads into the Columbia catalogue. In fact, pretty much, pretty much gone through that mine and uh, it's uh, been plundered for most of what it's worth at this point. Um, so it's great that they're now able to do the Universal catalogue because there'll be, there'll be gold in them. There are hills if I can mix my mine and hill metaphors. Um, so we're going to be having a look at um, the films today and luckily, because these are slightly more famous films starting slightly bigger names than a lot of the um, Columbia films, I have seen all of them. Um, not these particular versions apart from a couple which I watched yesterday um, and I had a good chance to dig through the extras as well. So. Hey, hey, hey. So we'll go through them, you know, by, you know, um, and the best place to start usually is the beginning. Um, so the web, what a tangled web we weave indeed. Um, so the web stars Ed O'Brien, who people um, will know from Seven Days in May, Barefoot Contessa, etc., etc. Um, and also stars Ella Rains, um, who's fantastic in this, um, and William Bendix often was cast as the bumbling cop or the you know, down at heel type, um, but here he's very competent. It's a very unusual role for William Bendix to play, and starring Vincent Price, um, back when Vincent was still much better, well, uh, better known for. Uh, for noirs, thanks to things like his kind of women with Robert Mitchum and um, Lauda, of course, you know, these kind of films. Um, so this is, um, I'm not going to go into spoilers on these because I think although they are more famous than a lot of the Columbia ones, they are still not household name titles, so I think it's best not to go into spoilers, just vague kind of plot notions. Um, so we have a character who's released um, after five years in prison for embezzlement um, and Vincent Price claims that he's been threatened by this person um, Ed O'Brien's is, is a lawyer slash bodyguard um, there's, a, there's a, a gunshot and Vincent Price says that he was only defending himself and luckily he's got a bodyguard and a lawyer and the same person but will that person be faithful and true to him? Hmm, I'll give you a clue. It's been some price in the 40s. You think he's a good guy? Do you think he's a good guy? Hmm. Well, I don't think that's a spoiler to say the least. Um, I love, I love that cover. It's absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely sensational. But what I also love is that, um, th that um, indicator, when they give you these eco-friendly cases, um, they also give you a reversible cover. Um, so you can have a look at yeah, like that. So although you don't get, uh, you know, a full full cover, you get something to look at at least, and then you also get a piece underneath. The, I won't do this for everything, but you get a piece underneath there, which is always worth you know, rather a lovely shot there. Um, and Ella Rains is fantastic in this. Um, she never went on to a massive career, but um, she was in one of the rare all female war films, Cry Havoc. Um, and she was in Phantom Lady and Hell the Conquering Hero, uh, the Preston Sturgis movie. So she, she had a good career, if not one that's, that's been immortalised in the way that uh, certainly Vincent Price has through his horror work and certainly I mean O'Brien through, again, Seven Days in May and, and great films like that. Um, it's a double cross, a triple, a triple murder with kisses for me. Uh, it's run through the extras. Um, 2017 4K restoration. Um, David Del Valle does a new commentary on it. Um, we have a Victoria Price 30 
minute Q&A, um, which is uh, from 2018, um, with the Film Noir Foundation's Alan K. Rowe. That is great. I watched that yesterday intentionally because Victoria Price has been on a lot of features over the years. But given the nature of her father's career and what's more commercial, most of it tends to focus on Vincent Price horror icon. So for her to spend 30 minutes talking about his pre-horror career as a noir icon um, and something of a leading man, often villain, you know, that, that kind of dragon wiki there as well. Um, it, it's wonderful. You can see she's quite excited to talk about it. And um, she's a wonderful, wonderful person. I've seen her in, in many interviews and uh, she's very proud of her father and very open about who he was because he wasn't, he wasn't somebody who had who he was. And uh, yeah, got a great soul, Vincent Press. So it's great to see his daughter, her uh, daughter still going strong and uh, Spreading the good word of Vincent Price. We do get a Luck Radio Theatre version um, with Ella, Edmund and Vincent Price in the roles, and that's from 1947. I've got an addiction to these old radio adaptations because you get a condensed version of the story to fit in 10 hour, but you usually have one of the stars. So you'll get your radio host who will say something like, and it was Cecil B. DeMille for some of them. I don't, I don't know if that was Lux, but um, who would say, and Vincent, won't you come and join us? And then Vincent Price will come in, sometimes in character, or whoever the actor is, sometimes in character, and talk to the, the host. And um, they'll say, and where, what does your good lady wife use at home when you're coming home from a long day's work on the studio lot? Why, she uses Lux soap. It's the greatest thing. And blah, 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 blah. It's wonderfully old-fashioned and... And so kind of cheesy, but um, yeah, I wouldn't change it for the world. That's old school Hollywood for you, and uh, bless them. Um, we also get a Skirmish in the Home Front promotional short film for War Bonds starring Alan Ladd. Um, short film with Alan Ladd. There's a pun to be made there. In fact, I think I've just made it. Betty Hutton, Susan Hayward, um, and uh, William Bendix again, who's in this image gallery etc etc and, and um, new and improved English subtitles, UK premiere most of these have been released by Kino Lauber in the US but again these are absolutely stacked editions so although Kino have done them they ain't done them this well so we'll move on we'll move on to Larceny um, which is next up and this is from 1948 all they lived for was love and larceny uh, shout out to Ryan. Uh, Ryan and I have uh, a preoccupation with Brian Wilson's Love and Mercy. Well, in this case, it's um, Love and Larceny, that's what you need to know. Um, we have a four piece here essentially. It's a bit like uh, Nightmare Alley, and there's a uh, bigger cast for film noir, um, where it's a, a, a square rather than often it's either a straight line between the femme fatale and the sap or maybe a triangle with a, a gangster involved but here we also have the, the gangster's mall playing a much bigger part than usual and in fact in this case the gangster and the gangster's mall are much more interesting than the, the main characters and this is one I watched yesterday so I can say that definitively um, your main characters are um, John Payne and jo Joan Caulfield um, perfectly competent actors, good actors um, but yeah, your villains are Dan Jurea and Shelley Winters, um, two absolutely sensational legends who I don't think need an introduction. Dan Jurea, uh, we had a, a good look at him quite a bit during the Jimmy Stewart marathon that I did earlier in the year. Um, a wonderful actor who was able to portray villains so easily, but also give them a humanity, which is perfect for film noir. You don't want to be cartoonish and over the top. You want to have shades of grey, which literally is pretty much what film noir is all based on, isn't it? Um, and Shelley Winters, of course, started out in film noir and uh, you know, before ending up looking rather different in things like um, uh, the uh, the. Uh, What's it called? The Poseidon Adventure. I was going to say the Gene Hackman Priest movie. I don't think that quite covers it. The Poseidon Adventure. Yeah. So Shallow Winters. Um, so th this is about a con man who tries to swindle a war widow. Um, so that's that's um, 
uh, John Payne and Joan Caulfield um, for a non-existent uh, war memorial um, but then there's the gang boss played by Dan Durea and the mole played by um, Shelley Winters um, and there's a kind of love square love cube going on in it um, and yeah mm, yeah it's one of those don't be a too big gangster when there's a real gangster in town kind of affairs again we won't go into spoilers Audio commentary with uh, academic and curator Eloise Ross, brand new for this edition. The Heel with Sex Appeal, uh, half an hour Nick, Nick Pinkerton appreciation of the life, career and screen persona of Dan Durea. Um I'm sure it's wonderful, but come on, I could just do that. Just watch watch my old videos about loads of Dan Durea movies, you'll get a brilliant appreciation. No, Nick's wonderful. Um, and directed by the great George Sherman, um, so yeah, 1948, so, um, oh, and we'll, we'll all give you a look at the reversible cover there, that's great, I love that, that's fantastic, that really illustrates what I was saying there, that this, more than most film noirs, is a bit of an ensemble piece, rather than, rather than just, um, you know, a star vehicle, all they lived for was love and mercy, I love that tagline, love it. I mentioned that um, unlike the you know, the Columbia sets, this tends to have some bigger stars in it. None more so than here. Look at this. Joan Fontaine, for it is she, um, from Rebecca, and oh, just don't mention Olivia de Havilland, um, and Burt Lancaster, who, come on now, come on. If you, if you need the introduction to Burt Lancaster. <laughs> Sorry, I don't think this set's for you. Um, and Robert Newton. Is our villain in this one, um, and one of the uh, one of the interesting things um, about this film is it's set in London. It's not it's not filmed in London, so that is London is Dick Van Dyke's accent and Mary Poppins. Um, but Robert Newton um, would go on two years after this to be um, Long John Silver in Disney's Treasure Island, and he invented the whole ah Jimmy Lad that voice the pirates must have in every movie. Um, that was a complete invention of Robert Newton. Before that, pirates, watch any pirate movie, they just spoke in normal voices or working class voices, often quite posh voices, because pirates did tend to be ex-naval officers who, um, because there wasn't a war on, were just cast aside, so they just kept to the high seas and became pirates. Um, so it's, it's uh, the, the whole our Jimmy Lad nonsense comes from Robert Newton, and that's why he is the uh, patron to this day of international talk like a pirate day which believe it or not is a real thing we should have international talk like Burt Lancaster day um, a hunted man a love haunted woman um, I don't think that does this justice Joan Fontaine is not just the uh, the love haunted woman however that is the role that <sighs> these kind of actresses would unfortunately be cast in uh, sometimes for the purposes of publicity even though the uh, the actual film itself may be much more interesting but Lancaster is a prisoner of war um, and after the war is living in England um, he gets into a bar fight and accidentally kills someone Joan Fontaine believes it was an accident things start to repeat was it quite as much of an accident as uh, as we as we'd like to believe mm -hmm. Who knows? Well, you will if you watch this. Um, again, Josh, uh, audio commentary. All oh, these have good commentaries. This one's a 2K restoration. Josh Nelson, brand new commentary. John Fontaine's 63 minute interview um, from 1978 on audio with Martin Shawcross, the, uh, the film critic. Uh, United Action Means Victory, 1939, a 37 minute documentary about the General Motor Strike. GM. Bit different from 1938, uh, with a narration written um, by Ben Maddow, um, who would be caught up in the um, House of Un-American Activities Commission kind of affairs. Um, this is um, a Harold Hecht's uh, Norma production, um, which was the production company set up by Burt Lancaster. And this is 1948. He only made his debut in The Killers two years earlier, and here he is already taking control of his career and wanting to make more interesting and idiosyncratic film. 
um, that would come to its zenith later on with, um, of course, films like um, Blemmer, uh, Blemmer, J.G. Hunsaker, um, Sweet Smell Success, thank you very much, Sweet Smell Success. Um, um, and again, Seven Days in May, um, you know, Burt Lancaster was never one to rest in his laurels, he was very much a, I'll do a Hollywood movie to keep the big house, but then I'll go and do some really small, strange movies, and kept doing that through The Swimmer, or, you know, all through his career. Um, so, yeah, wonderful film with, um, even the title, by the way, Kiss the Blood Off My Hand, had to be put through censors. Um, and that went, th there's, there's a great, great piece um, in the commentary on there, um, where it talks about, um, the film censor eventually decided it was okay because film noir kind of changed the landscape of the way people talk in cinema. So it would have been deemed unacceptable and it, it still calls, it, there's a term I can't remember in the commentary, uh, lamentable or something, um, but says that um, given changing morals of the time, we have to accept that this is uh, the parlance. What is it? It sounds quite, it sounds like a Dracula film, Kiss the Blood Off My Hands, you know, it's very much Taste the Blood of Dracula from Hammer or something. Abandoned, um, starring Jeff Chandler, um, who was bumped up in the cast list, and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, and uh, Gail Storm and Dennis O'Keefe as your star. Um, actually, actually, uh, Gail Storm just star. Um, there's this woman, Gail Storm, and you have to admire someone called Gail Storm. Two names both mean the same thing. Gail Storm. Um, tries to find um, information about um, her missing sister um, and the police are not cooperative at all um, and a local crime reporter played by Dennis O'Keefe um, starts to become involved and he starts to help her dig deeper into what's going on. Jeff Chandler plays the, um, the uh, uncooperative uh, police chief um, and Raymond Burr's in here as well, just to add a little bit of, uh, of uh, extra noir in this. Um, but fantastic film, and it's um, it's of a piece with um, another Jimmy Stewart reference, um, Corn Northside uh, 777, where it's um, very much the notion that if the authorities can't help you, don't worry your friendly local journalists will. Now, they may be cynical, but they'll ultimately come good. Um, and it's that kind of anti-authority streak that runs through film noir. You wouldn't have the cop as your hero in a film noir. So the journalist is the next best thing. Um, fascinating. This is a very dark film. This is extremely dark and is even to this day um, quite harrowing. Um, it goes to some dark places. Um, and yeah, there are some things in here. Trigger warning, if you have any issues with um, the suffering of very young children, um, I'd maybe M maybe have someone else watch this first and give you a recommendation and make sure you're okay with it. Um, our commentary here is by the, uh, my goodness, the Mutton Jeff of, of film commentaries, um, Barry Forshaw and Kim Newman. Bless them both. Um, they have a billion and one commentaries between them and there's a reason for that because they can talk about absolutely anything and everything and make it ten times more interesting and insightful than anybody else bar possibly myself. Um, it's time when you and you being our tagline here um, and a couple of different uh, poster pieces there that I show you the poster. Um, for Kiss the Blood of My Hands, yeah, it's very similar. There's not really a difference there, apart from some tone uh, and the colour and whatnot. Deported. Um, I, I did say I'd talk about Jeff Chandler in a minute. Um, and this is where I'm talking about Jeff Chandler. Um, so this came out in 1950. Um, so did a film, again, to go back to Jimmy Stewart, called Broken Arrow where Jimmy Stewart's the go-between between, between Native Americans um, and um, settlers um, with the, the cavalry and whatnot. And Jimmy Stewart keeps a very uneasy peace. He's the kind of go-between. And the leader of the, um, forgive me, I, I don't know my, my tribes and whatnot, but the leader of the natives, um, who is a real life figure, Cochise, 
is played by Jeff Chandler and although he does it in red face it's a very sympathetic portrayal so if you can get past the red face Broken Arrow is highly recommended however this isn't <laughs> this isn't a Jimmy Stewart um, retrospective this time Jeff Chandler here rather than play um, a, a Native American is playing an Italian American um, he was neither of those things as you, as you can guess with a name like Jeff Chandler um, who is deported um, and sent to Italy um, back home where it turns out maybe that was a scheme all along to try and loot something from a, a contessa mm. um, one of the cool things about this is the cast itself are actually pretty much all um, Italian um, which is quite rare for the time um, it's it's not the kind of film um, that normally would be um, would be made like that. Um, it would be done in a back lot. And you'd have maybe Italian Americans, but you wouldn't have actual Italians. Whereas these are Italians, um, and big parts of it were filmed in in uh, Naples and Siena and Tuscany in nineteen forty nine. Um, Jeff Chandler was was. Um, his, his fame kind of happened halfway through when Broken Arrow came out and this got promoted to be a much bigger film than it was originally intended to be um, which uh, worked out quite nicely for, for all concerned so yeah uh, so this is um, let's see 2017 restoration audio commentary with Daniel Kramer Return to Europe uh, Christina Newland uh, discover, discusses the work of Robert Siobmack and the twin influences of American and European cinema and deported again we're in 1950 and we're talking about film made half American half Italian um, so it does have that almost um, Rossellini like uh, thing going on not to that greatness but Robert C. Obmack who the directs this was of course a great director as well something of a journeyman but that's not an insult he was a great director um, and a great noir director um, you know, he, he was the director of the, the Killers Criss Cross uh, directed by Lancaster quite a lot uh, Spiral Staircase to do more gothic kind of stuff a great journeyman um, who could turn his hand to anything um, and someone who was perfect for noir because he understood um, lighting better than most um, and understood how to use um, depth and shadows um, and if there's a, a real star of film noir it's not any one actor is it it's really shadow that's the you know to set the actual scene itself it's shadow and fate i suppose if you want to be pretentious about it shadow and fate well that sounds like the name of a book i could write they kicked him out of the country and dared him to stay alive he had a talent for trouble and a taste for gaudy women <laughs> oh, if only had a taste for you know just women but those gaudy women are what brought jeff chandler down yeah. And then all oh, last up, but certainly not least today, certainly not least, look at this for a pair, two of a perfect pair, Sterling Hayden and Gloria Graham. Sterling Hayden, of course, of the Killers and, and, and uh, right through to uh, Doctor Strangelove and The Godfather. He's, of course, the police uh, detective who breaks Al Pacino's jaw and sends him back to Italy yeah, funnily enough given her last film um, and Gloria Graham started in things like It's a Wonderful Life but would be in, um, in a lonely place another great noir actress um, so we're really getting the creme de la creme um, of, uh, of noir in this piece um, the story of a love with the law at its heels um, so naked alibi yeah, so Another nice picture there, actually. I really like that one. So that's, that's, that's great. I really like um, a lot of these reversible covers more than the actual cover themselves, um, which is probably, you know, mm, oh well. Um, th this is the other one that I watched yesterday that I hadn't seen before. Um, and it's, it's quite an interesting one. Um, there's a. <sighs> This one is more of a cop movie, um, which, as I said, there's not always a lot of cops involved in film noir. If they are, they're not always um, 
they're not always the uh, the hero but in this case or he, anti-hero I suppose in film noir but Sterling Hayden is Chief Chief Joe Conroy I want to say Conroy I was going to say Convoy but I'm thinking that's a song um, and uh, he takes up a um, a, a, an innocent man's case and it's one of those kind of a bit like The Wrong Man um, by Hitchcock um, with Henry Fonda it's one of those kind of almost half documentary half uh, narrative um, films that were made around this period um, again 1954 so this is by far the latest in the set so it does have the benefit of, of uh, being pretty much towards the end of the noir cycle really when you think about it but uh, hey uh, Troy Horth and Nathaniel Thompson do our new commentary here again this is why it's better than Kino these have all got new commentaries by A-list commenter commenters um, absolute magnetism um, a documentary about me uh, no academic Lucy Bolton discusses the life and career of Gloria Graham, one of film noir's greatest film fatales, and wasn't she just film stars? Never Dying Liverpool was that the name of the film that came out a few years ago? But her latter years, film stars, never something in Liverpool. Anyway, uh, the cinematographer um, documentary directed by Jerry Hopper, um, who's the director for this film, um, produced by uh, the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, providing a guide to the role of director of photography. Um, so it's good to see this is what they thought a cinematographer, you know, you get a little documentary about what a cinematographer's job was in the noir era, which is quite interesting, because obviously that was an era which was very much defined by cinematography. Um, and again, this is a 12-rated film. So. And we have gone quite in depth on this, even though it's just one set, but really they do deserve it. And look at the booklet you get. This is not a booklet, this is a book. So, you know, we'll just we'll just go through some random pictures, but while we you know try and you know, I mean, look at the cover even. There's <laughs> Vincent Sands mustache, but certainly uh distinctly Vincent Price. Uh, Michael Gordon. There's William Bendix down there with Ed O'Brien. Two great actors. Yeah. Wow. Wow. We. This is even for even for indicator. This is quite something. Lancaster doesn't quite pull off the uh, the, uh, the the bonnet, does it? But oh well, too much of a star. Um, oh, it looks, you yeah, know, it pulls it off a bit, a bit more there. Yeah. Oh, it's a great picture, but look at that. Lancaster finds life changed as producer. Yeah, exactly as I was saying. There's a there's a whole piece here about Bert Lancaster starting to produce his own films, which you know would be a major part of his story. Um, there's Jeff Chandler, the rather dashing Jeff Chandler. Look at him there. He's, he's almost one of those people you hate because he's too handsome. Um, Naked Alibi, Starling Hayden um, was. Not someone you hated because he was too handsome. You hated him because he usually played bastards. There's Gene Barry as well, another great uh, film noir uh, character. Uh, uh, Gloria Graham. So, yeah. There's no fluff. Have a look at it. It even goes into the shorts and things. They all get their own little pieces. It's not as if they're just tossed in here. Um, you know, I mean, there's Burgess Meredith is on one of the shorts. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic stuff. It really is. It really is quite remarkable. But we go back to Burt Lancaster again. If you've got if you've got Burt Lancaster in your set, you probably want to use old Burt to uh, to sell it. So. Let's put them all in the in the case here. Mm. Yank. 
and this is how it is so there's your your case versus the bonus jeff on the front with uh i love the uh, the images they use where it's just the person with uh, with a stark background um there's universal volume one um so the promise of more to come is rather enticing um, and we know there are more to come they're under license from hollywood classics and here's your belly band that goes round. This is number look number two hundred and eighty-one. Um, so I, and that's six thousand. So I'm a million here because I've got an ACL number. Folks, we've done half an hour, but um, I don't think that's too bad when we've reviewed one, two, three, four, five, six movies in part, but also going through all the special features and let you know whether or not I think they're worth your time and money. Um, again, I haven't gone through every commentary, I've only listened to a couple of them, but I have seen all six films now, and I can thoroughly recommend all of them. I'd say the weakest of them is probably the web, but don't wait for this box set to be split up. Just pick it up, just pick it up. This is a fantastic set um, with... <laughs> The names that I was spouting there, Burt Lancaster, Gloria Graham, Starlin Hayden, Jeff Chandler, you know, you're talking about absolute icon, Robert Sword, Mac, you know, uh, Burgess Meredith even, in, in one of the short films that you get included, you know, so, so just go for it, folks. Anyway, thanks very much for your patience, as always, um, I appreciate it, and... Uh, yeah, let me know if you've seen any of these films or if, uh, if there's any noirs from Universal that you're particularly looking forward to, to having taken out of the vaults in the future. Because Universal Noir is bold, bruising, jolting, and jarring drama. It's actually not jarring, that's, that's a bit disparaging. It's perfectly lovely drama. Um, but enjoy your weekend. Stay very safe out there and uh, love and larceny to you and your friends tonight.